Thank you, Kareem, and good morning, everyone. We are delighted to have you here. On behalf of President Obama, I'd like to welcome you to the White House um, for this very important celebration of Autism Awareness Month. And I want to thank you for joining us uh, on this occasion. It's wonderful to have so many advocates and parents and researchers and health professionals who've traveled far and wide to be with us today. And I'm particularly delighted that we have our secretary, Secretary Sebelius, who you'll be hearing from shortly, who is here with us as well. And thank you for your leadership on this very important issue, as well as the Departments of Justice and Education and Labor for their works to make this event so successful. Finally, I'd like to thank the members of the Interagency Autism Coordination Committee for offering us valuable insight and helping to guide the Obama administration's policies. Uh, like many members of our administration, including Mike Stratman as my chief of staff, who many of you know, I have a personal connection on the autism spectrum. My first job in college was, um, I went to Stanford, and we had on the college campus a school. And I was a assistant teacher for a class of children who had autism. And I was touched by those children. I've never forgotten them. They were all from ages about four, five, and six. Uh, but not only was I touched by the children, but I was touched by their parents as well, who were very involved with the school. And I think as everyone knows that if a child has autism, it doesn't just affect the child, it affects the entire family. And so that experience, which is now many, many moons ago, has, has stayed with me. Uh, so on a personal note, I'm delighted that we're celebrating here at the White House. As you know, the president has always been an unwavering advocate for people with disabilities, including those on the autism spectrum. As an Illinois state senator, he worked tirelessly to help start an autism school in our hometown of Chicago. And as a US senator, he staunchly supported the Combating Autism Act. As president, his administration has expanded investment in autism research and education, detection, innovation, treatment, from early intervention for children to coordinating family services to support adults. And for the first time, the president issued a proclamation of World Autism Awareness Day. I'm proud to state that for those of you who may not have heard, the president and his administration support the reauthorization of the Combating Autism Act and the continuation of the IACC, of course. We recognize that there are many needs for, there may be needs for modifications, and we are committed to working with all of the stakeholders in a very open and transparent way. So the Obama administration's work on autism has been extensive, but as you know, this is not something that government alone can tackle, and that's where you guys come in handy. We, invite you, we invited you here to the White House today to hear about your experiences and your ideas. And we're hopeful that during the breakout sessions this afternoon, you're going to find new ways of collaborating with fellow autism stakeholders. And we hope that you'll offer your suggestions that can make the Obama administration even a stronger partner than we are already. We know that our discussions today will begin a new phase, one marked by new levels of collaboration and new understandings of the role each of us can play in improving the lives of people on the autism spectrum. So I want to thank you for your hard work, for your dedication, for your commitment to this important, important issue, and to let you know that on behalf of the President, we in the Obama administration stand ready and prepared to work with you uh, as we work to solve this very, very important challenge. So with that, Karim, am I introducing the Secretary, or are you going to do that? You're going to come back up and do that? All right. Well, again, thank you. Thank you very much. Valerie gave a tease. So the next uh, speaker we have, who woman who has been a leader and needs no, needs no introduction, a supporter and a leader, Secretary Kathleen Sebelius. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Just be thankful you're in this room and not out with the 70,000 Easter egg hunters in 85 degree weather. I don't know what it is about the White House Easter egg roll, but you can be sure that the temperature will be 85 degrees. Um, 
It was a month earlier last year, and the temperature was 85 degrees. So um, it is very nice to um, have a chance to join all of you. I want to start by introducing uh, somebody from our office who is working on this very important issue. Dr. Nadine Grazia is our chief medical officer in the office of the assistant health secretary. Um, so Nadine is here today and um, is a kind of constant point person on this initiative. But I, like Valerie, am pleased to welcome you here and know that uh, you're here as advocates, experts, leaders, parents, uh, providers, and adults affected by autism. Um, I want to thank President and Mrs. Obama for actually convening the conference today, but more important, uh, for their real leadership on this issue. Uh, there's no question that helping every American on the autism specter reach his or her full potential is a top priority of the administration. And we at the Department of Health and Human Services and across the government have come together to look at our assets and to try and leverage our collective assets and resources to better serve the people who are affected and, as Valerie said, the families who are affected. Now, we recognize that in the last few decades, the landscape has changed pretty dramatically, uh, bringing together new challenges for families, schools, and healthcare providers. Uh, as recently as the early 90s, scientists were still calling autism a rare disorder and counting the numbers at about one in every 2,000 children. Uh, as you all know better than anyone today, the most recent data says it's really more like one in a, about 110 children affected uh, by autism. And almost everybody you talk to knows this issue uh, through a personal experience or a family member. Uh, we know that many people with autism specter disorders are able to lead full and productive lives. However, we also know that there are lots of folks who need more assistance and sometimes intense health and supportive services. And HHS particularly wants to help those individuals and their families who are facing the most serious challenges. So for many families, there's still lots of questions. Uh, what treatments help? Where can families get services that are desperately needed. And as a community and a nation, I think we have to figure out what exactly does cause autism and how, if there are preventable strategies, how it can be prevented. Now, we have better answers to these questions because of the Combating Autism Act, a law that sparked real progress for those with autism and their families. Uh, thanks to better data collection, we have better information about when and where autism occurs. In 2009, the National Database for Autism Research had just 500 people registered. Today, we have over 54,000, and that number continues to grow. We know about treatments that work and services that help. We know that early intervention can greatly improve a child's development, and that the first three years, like many things, are particularly critical. And that's why educating more health professionals to recognize the signs of autism as early as possible so children can get treatment when it's most likely to be effective is one of the most critical strategies. And we continue to identify the gaps that still need to be addressed. For example, we know we can do a better job making sure the latest research findings are incorporated into the services and supports we provide for families with autism. And that's why HHS has created two national autism research networks that will allow researchers to gather data from different sites in order to identify the most promising treatments for autism. And the networks also create channels for best practices to flow quickly back to parents and providers around the country so that Americans can have the latest possible evidence on what treatments may work and what don't work. At the state and local level, we also have more work to do to break down old barriers and build productive partnerships. Now, our department just released a new report confirming that significant challenges still exist when it comes to designing services, 
payment and delivery for people with autism spectrum disorders, but we are moving in the right direction. Medicaid has begun supporting approaches like the medical home models that help children with autism get the kind of coordinated family-centered care that we know helps children thrive. And we're working closely with states to provide targeted case management that helps kids with autism get support they need at home and at school. We're also continuing to be informed from the latest research. Earlier this month, our interagency Autism Coordinating Committee highlighted some of the most recent research, including studies exploring high-tech imaging techniques, new genetic risk factors, novel ways to diagnose autism spectrum disorder using speech patterns, and the first intervention proven to be effective for toddlers. Now those are the kinds of projects that give us new hope. A few years ago, many of those efforts would have been the stuff of pure imagination. But today, we have hard evidence, and it's showing the way forward. Researchers are also now starting to classify subcategories of autism, making it easier to tailor interventions to respond to individual needs. Since 2006, the National Institutes of Health commitment to autism research has doubled. They currently support 11 autism centers of excellence around the country, where teams of specialists can come together in a single facility to address a particular research problem in depth. So along many different avenues, our investments are paying off in the form of greater knowledge, better treatment, and improved services. But perhaps the biggest step we've taken to support those living with autism and their families came just over a year ago when President Obama signed the Affordable Care Act into law. For so many families, learning that their child had autism didn't only lead to tough, complicated questions about care and treatment. It also brought huge medical bills and often very discouraging news from their insurance company. But that is beginning to change. The health care law is already helping to ease the financial burden that comes often with treating and caring for people with autism spectrum disorder. The new law requires plans uh, written after September of last year to cover autism screening and developmental assessments with children at no cost to their parents. And insurers are now banned from denying children coverage from any pre-existing health condition, and that includes autism spectrum disorder. They're also no longer allowed to set arbitrary lifetime limits on benefits that can mean your coverage disappears when you need it most, and we're phasing out annual benefits along the way. And we know that adulthood brings a whole new set of challenges. Thanks to a new law, young adults are allowed to stay on their family's health insurance until they turn 26. And that has provided some help and support to families uh, right away. And by 2014, no adults will be banned from the insurance market due to pre-existing health condition. That's a huge change for anyone with a pre-existing health condition. So for a young adult with autism spectrum disorder and their families, that means peace of mind. It means more flexibility and more options, more opportunity to reach a full potential. What all of these steps mean is that there are more support for Americans with autism than ever before, and more promises of new breakthroughs that will help us understand even better. Now, unfortunately, as many of you know, the Combating Autism Act is set to expire this year. And you know we have much more important work still to do. More research to carry out, more treatment to develop and refine, more tools to give healthcare providers so they can get even better at diagnosing autism as early as possible. And that's why the President and I are committed to fully supporting reauthorizing the Combating Autism Act this year. We've made some real progress in our work to meet the complex needs of all people with autism spectrum disorder and their families. But we can't afford to stop now, and we won't. If we're going to succeed in understanding and meeting the needs of those with autism, we need to take a comprehensive approach. Healthcare providers play a central role. 
but so do parents and schools, so do coaches and faith leaders, so do youth advocates and community leaders. We're taking a leadership role at the Department of Health and Human Services, but we know our efforts make a much deeper impact when we can collaborate with our partners across government, with the Departments of Education, with Housing and Urban Development, with Justice and the Department of Labor. And we've recently established a new National Resource and Information Center to provide information on community-based services and intervention for people with autism spectrum disorder and their families. And last month, we launched a new website that provides job skills training for high school graduates who have autism spectrum disorder or certain disabilities. So in closing, I wanna thank you again for being here today and for your partnership in this effort. I look forward to hearing your ideas, your strategies, your questions, your comments, and strategies that come out of the breakout sessions. Now we have more questions and answers still about autism spectrum disorder, but we're working harder than ever to find those answers. And together we're building a world where everyone can reach his or her greatest potential. And I just see that I also failed to introduce Dr. Howard Coe is here, and he is my Assistant Secretary on Health. So you get the, the uh, Howard who will be with you uh, during the rest of today. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for the work you're doing, and we look forward to being informed by you. Thanks a lot.